All right, so it's a little cold out. Winter has reared its head one more time. And uh, I am on my way to some friends that we met in San Hollow. Uh, the guys over at Devant Race Parts. Um, I'm looking to maybe get some parts for the Razor, some trailing arms, not trailing arms, uh, some radius rods. Maybe some uh, front control arms, things like that. So we'll see how it goes. We're gonna go pay a visit, maybe do a podcast, uh, check things out and see how they're doing over at Devon. Chad Hall, I'm Chad Hall from Deviant Race Parts. Um, glad to be here, thanks guys for uh, tuning in. Yeah, so I uh, wanted to stop by, they have some cool parts that uh, I think we're gonna put on the Razor, so we came to check out some new stuff from these guys for the Razor, and uh, I think you're gonna take us for a little yeah, tour. Let's, let's go back. All right. Well, you got the guys at lunch, so <laughs> it's lunch time, and that's the reason why it's quiet in the shop right now. <laughs> Probably the best time to do it. But this is the shipping, uh, this is kind of like the, the, the area where we take all of our raw parts, make them in, and package them, put them all there, and then they end up on the shelves behind you. And then um, we have just a few parts out here, our Mazak, four axis CNC. Um, we do a lot of work on this machine. Uh, we don't just do um, side-by-side -side stuff, we do diesel parts as well. So these are some of the parts that we're machining right now. Um, obviously it's quiet, so we, it's quite a complex little part that we're doing. It's a fuel sump for a, a And that all comes out of a block of a billet like this. Yep. That has to go in and get milled on various different sides and Yeah, and so that. we have all of our- So normally our, this is all running all day long. Yep. So anyways, do that. And then uh, we, back here, it's kind of our facility where all the dirty stuff takes place. So right now we're working on a gusset kit for the Can-Ams. Um, our plasma table for all of our cut parts, and then our it's kind of a cool in there that uh, we use this we use this table probably seven to ten hours a day, so it gets used a lot. Kind of a cool story on this uh, old press break. It was built at the uh, end of World War II, so it uh, helped defeat the Nazis. Really? It's kind of, yeah, it's kind of a kind of a neat old machine. We refurbished, went through a bunch of stuff. Can't quite keep these things uh, from leaking, but they do it. Does a good <laughs> job and it served us really well. And it's kind and of like my uh, 604. It's a good truck. You just can't keep it from leaking. That's exactly right. So, <laughs> so a co couple of our well bays is where the guys are usually assembling either uh, radius rods, tr uh, arms, any of the stuff that they're doing back there. Kind of keep the the splash or the flash away. Um, our welding equipment's all back here. This is more diesel parts, so this would be like an intake elbow for a Cummins. Um, this is intercooler pipe, stuff like that. So we're not just doing, you know, side-by-side -side parts, it's diesel parts too, so it's right. kind of where we started at um, in 2010. So it's kind of grown from there and then um, got some, you know, the Pro R. So that's like- well, I was uh, saving that for the end, but bang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys got a sweet new setup in the shop here. Yeah, so we're- uh, Four actually, seater even. And you guys also got the X3 over here, which we yeah. saw a little bit of. You guys are developing some parts on the front end of that. A um, little XMR action going on there. But uh, yeah, you guys got a sweet little unit. What are you guys doing on that? So today we actually, this is the first time this has been in the shop. It hasn't been driven, it hasn't, been, it hasn't gone anywhere. We're trying to keep it as perfect as possible for R&D. Um, so today we actually pulled the front shock off. We're gonna go ahead and make the uh, fork mount. 
uh, out of billet. So we have, um, we have the shock apart and um, now it's just set there so I can actually drive it in and out of the shop. And then we're gonna start working on all the suspension components. So uppers, lowers, uh, radius, rod in, uh, radius rods, all the sway bar end links, roll cage, rock sliders, bumpers, you name it. So this will be our test bed for all of the Pro R stuff. And then as soon as we get um, done with this, we'll probably end up in the Turbo R as soon as they come out. So. so the Turbo R has been the one that I personally have been wanting to get my hands on just because I think that it's going to be kind of the happy compromise between the per people that want reliability and a, and a known component system, right? They can go yep. get upgrades today for the engine. Right flash the ECU, get a bunch of horsepower. Yep, but all, get all the clutching's the available. I mean, that, that's, yeah. but it's not out yet. So right. I'm looking forward to seeing that car. It's also seven inches shorter than this car. So yeah, this is a tall dog right here. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm 6'2", and this thing's over my head. So you can see how tall this bad boy is, but. Yeah, so this will be this will be a fun project for us. I, we're, we've been really looking forward to getting getting our hands on one. We found one and went to actually Power Sports. Kind of a plug for those guys because they did me a really good job on this. I didn't even pay up a retail, so I feel good about that. And it actually was here in stock at the yeah. Facility. You can get your hands on it, which is a big deal these yeah. days. So yeah, we'll go through this whole car. Like I said, I think we're we're working we're going to work on uh, the end links for the sway bars to make them adjustable. People want them to be stiffer or softer. Um, and since we really only do suspension components and accessories, we're not gonna be doing exhaust or any of those things for this car, um, just to kind of keep it clean for us. But this will be a fun one for us. The, I think the whole shop's excited to have this in here and hopefully you guys will get some good product out of it. Yeah, I think it'll be, I mean, obviously any new car brings new innovation, brings new ideas and uh, you know, gives everybody a lot of ideas on what they can improve and make unique on their own side. Um, with a car like this, I mean, you got to you got to expect that there's probably going to be some some development woes and some time and investment put into making a, a cool you know car that can do a lot of cool stuff. But uh, does I mean does this have, make you excited to to bring a new car to market and, and have new parts? Absolutely. Anytime we can get a new car, especially something like a new platform like this. Um, it, it allows us to like flex our, you know, our, our ability to build things and, and some of the innovation that we are coming to market with. And I, I kind of, I kind of feel like this is going to be the platform that every, you know, that everybody's going to like, and it's already a robust platform. So we're not worried about like the frame stuff, but the suspension's already shown weaknesses. So it's nice. You post that video about the, the radius rod that kind of right. came apart. Um, so. I'm kind of excited to see the, the, the new changes that come out of this machine and the designs and the, and the innovation that just market-wide that right. comes out for these machines. You know, we've, we've been dealing with the Can-Ams for so many years now. We've been dealing with the, the XP line for, what, since, I mean, 2011 when the 900 came out. Um, you know, it's all the same stuff. Well, this has kind of changed that a little right. bit, you know? Yeah, when the Pro XP came out, it was just a bunch of new, new plastics for the most part. Um, and so this is the first major physical change to the platform outside of, you know, just the plastic chassis, stuff like that. So um, I'm super excited. So I brought the guys donuts. You saw what was in there first. Well, they're not quite gone yet, but those will be gone by the end of the day. But in trade for donuts, I think we're going to be jumping into some new parts. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a pretty fair trade. Do a, so, uh, do some fat pills for a few pieces of billet and some <laughs> metal. So for uh, the 2016 turbo that we are running, uh, we're running factory suspension right now. We're on the process of figuring out what upgrades we want to do. Uh, and you got some solutions here. So what do you got? So this is our three quarter inch uh, CNC 6061 uh, bill aluminum machined in house. So, so this is uh, a this rear, are, radius. This rear, rear radius rod uh, plate. It right. also incorporates, which he kind of didn't take it out of the packaging and uh, a D ring here. And then you've got all grade eight uh, or 10 nine bolts. Um, we actually pull tested this piece uh, when we came out with it and it snapped the two bolt heads off the back of the D-ring at just over 20,000 pounds. So if you're yanking out of that hard, none of the plate deformed. So uh, if you're Tarzaning with your razor, 
from your rear pool plate, this will hold it. Yeah, we picked the whole car up. There's a, one of our YouTube videos on, uh, on the Deviant Race Parts uh, YouTube page as shows us picking it up at the back of an excavator and kind of hanging it there. Um, it'll be plenty stout for pulling anything out. So <laughs> that's it. And then so we, what you're saying is in this package is a D-ring that yeah. goes right across here, which yep. becomes a pull plate. And this hole is for your uh, diff fluid uh, fill, correct? correct? Yep. Yeah, yep. diff fluid, diff fluid fill. So you can, you can fill okay. it or well, change. Kind of awesomeness you hiding from us here? Well, my friends Aww. at Industrial Injection sent me a little Christmas present. That's uh, pretty sweet. Yeah, it's a nice little knife. It's perfect for box cutting. And, uh, <laughs> and the only thing it is, it's really wide. Yeah. So you can put it in your pocket. It takes regular, it takes, you can't put your hand in it. I don't have big hands, so I just put it in the coin, the coin pocket. Anyways, that's where the D-ring goes. Um, so that's a pretty stout D-ring, and you got lots of room for your shackles or whatever else you're going to put through yeah, there. Yeah, so. I use I end up using sh uh, soft shackles on them because right. it doesn't it doesn't take mar it up. up yeah, it doesn't mar it up. Yeah, yeah. but uh, Those we've had winch cables. Always better, yeah. anyways. And so then, what do we got going on here? So these are our Basher series, uh, inch and a half um, radius rods or DOM metal, bent bent in house, all fa all, the, all fabricated in house. So we got through the packaging because it's so well packed that it took us a few minutes. <laughs> But uh, so these are these are all inch and a half DOM. Uh, we we they're bent, welded, fab. They're TIG welded, TIG welded bung ends. They come with uh, with three piece uh, chromoly Heim joints. We've actually pull tested the Heim joints, um, and they broke at uh, eighteen thousand pounds. So they're high quality high quality Heim joints. Then we get the uh, offset bushings to go in offset spacers for the uh, for the Heim joints. And, and I then think a, I saw online was there like a an o-ring or something that there, reduces the that re reduces the noise yeah. yeah so in this packaging some somewhere in the packaging yeah there's o-rings that go in between the the heim joint and the the uh, offset spacer right what that does is it, as you know they're meant to move all the heim joints are meant to move and so you get a little bit of rattle so you put the o-rings o-ring in between that and that keeps the rattle down so right. it's so just a nice consumable part that can easily get replaced yeah. but makes your driving experience a lot better. Correct, yeah. And that was one of the things we noticed when we were when we were putting our first set together four years ago that they rattled a little bit, so we uh, threw that O-ring in and, and that kind of right. fixes that, so. So down here we have the upper and the lower high clearance, and which series, the Bash series? Yeah, these are the Basher series, yeah. So as you can see, I'm not a small person and I got a big hand. This is about the size of a stock XP drive shaft. Uh, but it's <laughs> a lot beefier. We should start making drive shafts. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, That's maybe a, we should. Um, get one of those balancing machines to get them all done. But you can see we got the we got the the wrenchable ends on them for the Himes. Uh, They're adjustable at both ends, so you can, right. you can adjust uh, your your camber and, and all that stuff. So. Yeah. And, are, and they're left and right threaded, so you can Correct, do yep. the full yep. twist movement. Obviously, you're not going to be able to do that with the, with the high clearance. High yeah, clearance, you're going right. to have to have one arm off in order to, to do that, but with any of the straight lengths, right. you can. And so. so when you set these up, you start with matching your, your lower to your standard width and then start adjusting your upper? That's correct, yep. yeah. Yeah, and then you can set your, set your uh, camber the way you want your tires to set, whether you want it to a little bit lean, one or two degrees or three degrees or whatever, you can do that with right. the top bars. But, um, uh, so what basically what we're looking at is... A a complete revamp of our rear end on the XP uh, with both an upgraded trailing arm setup that can take the abuse that we're looking at doing. We're looking at a, a radius rod plate that's going to hold these things together and not let our chassis waller out. And uh, I think we're going to be pretty solid on the rear end. Maybe we can start looking at the front end after we get this kind of dialed in and, and going strong. So you guys have control arms for the lowers. We have lowers and uppers for the XP 1000 XP turbos, right. lowers uh, for the XP turbo, or the turbo S's, for the pros, um, all the Can-Ams, 64 wide and 72 inch wide um, XP, or the X3s. Um, so we've got those, we're building the uppers uh, as we have enough time. We're not right. a big shop. Uh, about five well, and of you're us doing here, it right, so. right. You're not just throwing stuff at the wind and seeing what happens. So no, my guy, times a, takes time. Yeah, my guys really enjoy the process of making the parts. So when they're making them, they're trying to make it as perfect as possible for the end consumer. Right. You know, because we end up having to take the tech call. We're the ones that get the calls like, hey, why doesn't this fit, or why doesn't you know what's going on? And we'd rather send a part out that fits the first time than than to have you know send out batches of parts 
don't you know fit every car. So right. yeah, there's so, a lot of time that goes into it. So the XP currently has radius rods the size of my pinky. We now have radius rods the size of the drive shaft. We're going to be good to go for some trail riding. Um, I think it's about time we go take a closer look at that Pro R. So I'm going to go out there and uh, you guys join us. He's going to get back to work because he's a busy guy. And uh, I think we also. I think we're gonna do a podcast. What do you think? Yeah, let's do a podcast. I always like well. a good podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>